Hey, what's going on? My name is Vim, and this is like the seventh or eighth time I've shot this video. I've been having focus issues and like camera issues and lighting issues. Anyway, if you, I really want to replace this, this, this camera. Do you have like a suggestion where with, of, of a camera that I can actually see myself on? A anyway, this is the Red Dragon Harrow G808 wireless gaming controller. And today we're going to be taking a look at this thing. I guess I should start by saying I like the the brand Red Dragon. Red Dragon is uh, ha provides affordable alternatives to gaming peripherals that would normally cost you quite a bit. So they cater to that kind of market looking for good gaming peripherals but don't want to spend an arm and a leg. So it's a good mission, right? So the Red Dragon, what does it come with in the box? It comes with this about two feet, two and a half feet worth of micro USB cable. So you could use it um, wired or wirelessly. It also has a manual. So it's mostly in English. The one I got is mostly in English. It just tells you how to insert the driver, how to use the, the controller itself, parts and stuff like that. So it works with PS3 and PC, at least that's what the manual can confirm. I know it also works on Android, I think, but read this. It also comes with a mini CD for the driver, but who who the hell still has like an optical drive? But you know, it's there. You could probably get it online, but it's there if you, if you need it. Also comes with a dongle. The dongle is tiny and I kind of appreciate the size. So if you have like a gaming laptop, you could put this into a free USB port and you could just kind of leave it there. You could take the laptop, you could put it into a, like a bag or whatever, and it's fine. It, it, it can stay there indefinitely because, because of the form factor, it kind of sits fairly close to your laptop, almost flush. Well, not really, but it's not long. So it doesn't run the risk of hitting anything and breaking. So that's good. But... It's still kind of crappy that there's a dongle in the wireless Bluetooth age, but still to be able to to support the PS3 and even you know what it's weird even controllers released last year still support the PS3. I don't think this will work on the DualShock on, on the PlayStation 4 though. But anyway, um, it, so it can support the PS3 and uh, like Android, it has to come with a, a dongle. But I do wish that the controller itself here it is has a way to store the dongle somewhere, kind of like uh, Logitech uh, mice, but no. You kind of have to just put it in your pocket if you want to take this with you. Let's talk build quality. So the first thing that I noticed as soon as I took it out of the box the first time was how bad the backplate plastic is. It's It feels like a child's toy. It feels like a knockoff toy. It's terrible plasticky plastic. However, the front plate is amazing. It's nice and velvety and smooth. And it's got nice matte uh, finish, so you won't have to worry about fingerprints too much. And it's really nice to hold. It's got this nice textured anti-slip uh, handle. It's really nice. Too bad this back plate is terrible. Front's good. Nice and durable, too. Nice and light too. And if you're playing for extended periods of time, comfort's important, right? So the if you notice, the handles are quite short. So when I put my fingers around it, you'll see that these two fingers have a home. This guy does not. So it kind of awkwardly sits on the back. Good thing that there's enough of a groove here that it can rest fairly comfortably down here. Fairly comfortable as long as you have tiny fingers. And then uh, the front, the angle seems a little aggressive, but it's shaped in such a way that uh, you can perfectly cup it with your palm and it sits there nice and uh, flush. Pretty comfortable. Overall, uh, fairly comfortable controller. Asian hands are probably gonna fit it better. Is it any more com comfortable than the uh, DualShock 3? Uh, a little bit, because these things are, these things are tiny. All right. In terms of button quality, because you'll be pressing a lot of buttons when you're playing a lot of games. Let's talk about the um, face button. I have an issue with these because they're kind of springy and they're loud. 
They're springy and loud. And their uh, travel distance to actuate the actual buttons, the travel is pretty far. So the combination of springy and uh, long travel distance makes pressing them simultaneously tricky, pretty hard to do. So if you're playing Tekken with something like this and you've got buttons that spring up fast and far, it's going to be hard to do something like an RDC where it's a, it's a number of button combinations because pressing them together simultaneously doesn't normally register as a simultaneous push. The shoulder buttons, for the most part, they work fine. They, they are accurate and there's no delay when pressing them. Um, but the feel of the shoulder buttons, especially these bumpers, pretty bad. They feel dated. Sort of like how um, on a VHS player, you know, there's a play button and a stop button. If you're old enough to remember VHS, this feels like that. This feels like pressing a, a VHS button. Works well, just feels kind of... It's tight, not mushy at all, but it feels really dated. The triggers themselves, they're all right. Um, the travel distance isn't too far. The D-pad, I'm actually quite impressed with the D-pad. The D-pad is accurate. There is no ghosting, uh, ghost movement of up and down when you're pressing left and right. So pulling off something like a forward-forward, uh, King's forward-forward combo, the controller isn't the limiting factor. I am because I suck. It achieves this by having the buttons fairly far apart from each other. So if you're pulling off like a, a crouch dash, you, your fingers really have to travel the distance or a short you can. Now if, you, if you compare to a DualShock 3, and I use the DualShock 3 as a comparison because I think it's like modeled after the DualShock 3, the direction buttons aren't as far apart from each other as that one. In terms of accuracy though, for the dead zones, um, I have a bit of an issue. The dead zones are small. And then once you leave the dead zones, there's low sensitivity. And then at a certain point, the sensitivity just ramps up like crazy. So you're going dead zone, dead zone, slow sensitivity, Speedy Gonzalez, which is difficult when you're aiming or even just moving the camera around. Aiming, not great on this thing. Not great at all. Um, other, another issue I have would be the aggressive angles on the select and start button. Now it doesn't seem like a big deal and it's not, it's not, but if you're playing a game that requires you to uh, open up a menu or manage skills or open up a map, you're going to be gliding your fingers from here to here fairly often. And if you see how they're angled, which is weird, it's angled, the tip of the triangle is pointed towards where your finger would be. So if you're gliding your finger from here to here, it snags on the damn button. So you have to lift. It's not a big deal. but it gets annoying really fast. Now, if you're thinking the DualShock 3 has a similarly shaped start button, you'd be right. But the start button on this thing is closer to the body. This thing's really raised, closer to the body. Plus, the directional, the D-pad and the face buttons are elevated from the main body. So when you're moving your left finger to the start button, even if you just glide it, you won't snag on the, the tip of the triangle. You'll just kind of glide over that. One notable good thing about the controller would be the battery life. So I played like eight hours straight um, on a single charge and it didn't fail me. So you're going to get at least eight hours out of it. And charging it back up probably takes an hour and a half, two hours to get it. Not even, probably an hour and a half max to get it fully charged. So that's a good thing. Another great thing would be the price. It's $20. I got it for a little over a thousand pesos. Uh, 1,100 with shipping. I'll probably leave the link down below if you're interested. So would I recommend the Red Dragon Harrow G808? Not really, no. You could probably get a better controller for about the same price. Like uh, what springs to mind would be the um, an OEM Nintendo Switch controller. It's unbranded, but it's better. About the same price. Add 10 bucks more, you could get the Nyko wireless. The core wireless works on the Switch. Low dongle, you'll have to play it wired, but USB Type C. Uh, the GameStar T4, which we've already reviewed here, there's a dongle. It's massive, but it's better. 
You could even go add 10 more dollars. You can get uh, the MSI GC30, which I hear is good, and we'll be reviewing that soon here. Or you could even buy like a DualShock 4, a bootleg one, which works exactly almost like a DualShock 4. We'll review that here soon. So maybe when it comes to controllers, pass on this one. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this is the last time I'm gonna be recording this video that would make it the eighth or ninth time. Uh, if you find this video helpful at all or entertaining in any way, we're trying to get back our monetization. So leaving a like and commenting on the video would help us quite a bit, especially if you subscribe. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I hope it's still recording because that kind of happened to me the last time.